Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I'm with my bestie, Carissa Garcia. Woo! Hi. All right, so we are in our Christianity 101 series. So last time David Catalano um, was talking about basically what does it mean to be a Christian. So now after, hopefully you gave your life to the Lord. If you haven't, um, we just pray mm-hmm. that you surrender everything to the Lord and choose to stay who you're going to serve and that today is the day of salvation for you. Mm-hmm. And if you have any questions, you guys can reach out to us. We'd love to answer them and if you even just want to read the word we encourage you to just start in the book of john and just read uh the truth of jesus so carissa thank you for being with us today thanks for having me yes so carissa if you guys don't know she has been going to the church since like was it july or august 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 and it feels like she's been here for like 20 plus years <laughs> um and it's just been cool to see what the lord has been doing in her life and how she was thinking she was going to go overseas to spain mm-hmm. as a missionary but she got stuck here in the desert in <laughs> uh, nineveh so <laughs> she which is wasn't that modern day or what is no it was Turkish. Spain. Spain is where was, they would run to when you're yes. running. Yeah. But you're supposed to be no, in Nineveh. No, Tarshish. Tarshish. <laughs> which, is Nin- which you were running to Spain, but the Lord's like, yeah, you got to come to Nineveh yep. in the desert. So she is here and she is serving. She actually um, does a lot of our social, well, all of our social media here. She uh, is in the coffee bar, youth group, worship team, helping me clean between services and just being a great friend. So... Oh. Carissa is going to actually lead this next topic that we're talking about, which is, um, what, what does it mean after you're Christian now? Like, Mm -hmm. how do you serve the Lord with your life? And, uh, what does it mean to be called into ministry or called, what is your calling? So I kind of butchered everything I was saying (laughs) in this topic. So I don't know what this title is going to be called, but Hopefully you feel the draw. The Lord knows because hopefully you're being called. So hopefully the Lord has been tugging in your heart to serve. And now that you, Lord willing, are a follower of Christ, that mm-hmm. you want to give your life as an offering to the Lord and surrendering everything mm-hmm. you have to Him. So uh, before we get started, Carissa, do you want to pray for us? And then we can just start wherever the Lord leads us to. All yeah. right. Lord, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for your grace and your mercies, Lord, that are new each day. And Lord, I thank you so much for just those who um, will be tuning in, Lord, and those who um, may have this podcast shared with them, God. I pray, Lord, that your word would go forth in power and in might, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit would um, just tug at hearts, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would bring conviction, that your Holy Spirit would bring revelation, Lord, and just discernment into the topic that we'll be talking about, Lord, which is, um, Lord, called into into service, Lord, and called to serve and what it means to be called to ministry and, um, yeah, Lord, and how to use your, your gifts in that capacity. And so I just pray, Lord, that you would just give us um, the words to say. I pray that you would anoint our speech, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would um, lead this conversation and and Lord, that we would also um, just be so grateful for the call that you've placed on, um, you know, my life and Mariah's life, Lord. And um, and that, Lord, through prayer and through seeking you is how we came to know our calling and our giftings, Lord. And so I pray mm-hmm. that others would be encouraged and exhorted to seek you, Lord, for what they might feel called to, what they feel a uh, burden for, and that you also would just send your people to encourage and to exhort those who need um, prayer in how to serve and what to do and what to do now that they've accepted Christ, Lord. And so mm. thank you, Lord, for, um, and foremost for saving us, Lord, yes, and um, for giving us that eternal life and, and even for the, um, the 
blessing it is to to serve you, but to be used of you, Lord. We just thank you for that and ask that you would just bless this podcast and those listening, Lord. So we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So pretend that I am a new believer and I'm asking you this question. I'm saying, Carissa, I'm a Christian now, but I don't know what to do. I feel like the Lord Mm -hmm. maybe wants me to get rid of everything and just go ask the pastor if I can work at the church or I don't know what to do. And some people, Mm -hmm. they don't know what to do after the save. They Mm -hmm. want to be radical, but they don't know what that looks like. Like, how do I serve? Where do I start? Um, Mm -hmm. I guess just what does that look like? So what would you tell me? You. Yeah. Um, I would first say, um, I think in after giving your life to Christ and then now knowing like, okay, how, how do I want to serve? How do I want to go out there? How do I want to, you know, preach the gospel? And Mm. I think, um, I think back of how it started for me and other people that I've seen walk through the beginning stages of their life with the Lord is, um, seeing if you can get plugged Mm. into your local church. Amen. Um, and also just praying about, um, even just your spiritual gifts as well. Um, and just knowing, you know, maybe where the Lord might be leading. And I think going to others for counsel and for wisdom, um, and to meet with you to just say like, okay, what are like practical ways that I can serve, you Mm. know? And it might start with just like, okay, can you help us, you know, clean? Can you help Mm. us do this? Can you help us, you know? And I think what it really is, is just that willingness to just serve and to be used of the Lord. Um, but also it is, um, I think that's a mark also of a true Christian is just being willing to serve others and being willing to love others. And so I would say the first thing is to get plugged Mm into a local church. So if you're a new believer, um, and you're, you know, wanting to serve or get into fellowship, I think really you need to get plugged into a church and to go to your leadership Mm -hmm. and let them know like, okay, this is it. Like I've, accepted Christ. Like I'd love to get plugged in. Yeah. And, and there are times where, you know, it might be a while, you know, like maybe just kind of wait until you maybe serve and things like that. It just depends where really. But, um, I think just to get plugged in and to just let them know, like, I have a heart to serve. I, I want to help in any way I can. And I think that just shows leadership too, that there's a willingness and that there's, um, I don't know, humility too, that you're just willing to serve wherever you're not like, Oh, I'm gifted in this and I'm gifted in this. And I want to go here, yeah. but just that you want to serve and you want to serve the body of Christ and you want to give your gifts back. So, mm. um, that's what I'd say. First and foremost is get plugged into a church. Yeah. Um, talk to people, let them know that you'd like to serve and that you're interested in it. And then, um, that way people can be praying too. Cause that's something that I've, I was encouraged in when I first came to the Lord and it was like, well, pray, pray where the Lord might want you to serve. And I was like, but I just want to serve like, you know, but it was like, well, seek the Lord and see like what doors he's going to open, you know? Mm. So that would be my first, Mm. my first thing is get plugged in and be willing to do anything. Yeah. Be willing to do anything, be willing to Mm. serve and let others know that you also like, you have a heart to serve so that they can be on the lookout for opportunities or the Lord might reveal to them like, Hey, someone's always really gifted here. Yeah. Yeah. I like, the verse that says let another man praise you where it's like Mm. it's not that you can't tell them like hey I also like am a drummer and I really like working with the youth I don't know Mm. you can say those things it's not like that's terrible but if you're like hey this is all I do this is what I'm good at this is all I want to I would say pray that the Lord like humbles you and softens you Mm -hmm. to realize that it might not be your time to do those things. Right. I've seen that for a lot of people. And they yeah. can really save is maybe you need some time of discipleship and yes. healing and deliverance first before maybe you're on stage or before right. you're working with the youth. So I would just mm. say, like Chris was saying, being willing to clean the bathrooms, be willing to, I don't know, Serve greet Lord, or yeah. do whatever. And it might seem like, oh man, I feel like going backwards. Mm. But I love how the Lord, he always... He just fights for also the underdog, those who like sit themselves at the lower position, then the Lord will exalt you and put mm-hmm. you in that position. Whereas if you put yourself in the the best seat or where you think you should be, then usually that person is mm. humbled or humiliated. Uh, so you don't want that. And that's yeah. why we just want to encourage you is to know that the Lord sees you. And if other mm-hmm. people aren't seeing you and you're like, I've been serving and doing all this and cleaning those toilets and no one's ever thanked me. No one's ever told me like, good job. 
Let's promote you. You might be a toilet cleaner your whole life, but the Lord Lord will reward you for that and he'll bless you. And not that I'm telling you, if you really do have a calling for something, God's speaking to you, like Chris was saying, tell someone, like go to someone and just humbly say like, I also do this. And if you, if you ever want to use me or me to use this gifting, I'm here. So anyway, but next part, what, what do you got? I don't want to. Let me just look at my notes here. Okay, yes, I know. I'm just, <laughs> just, just thankful someone has notes here, <laughs> which is so rare. But I was good like, job. I'm gonna do it this time. It's good. Um, yeah, I felt like the Lord really gave me like three tiers. So when we were talking, it was like, um, just having the heart to serve, but then also like knowing your calling, and then, yeah. um, I think also like what it looks like to be called into like full-time ministry too, mm-hmm. because that looks different for everybody. And so yeah. um, I felt like we covered like the first tier. And so the second one um, is just like to know your calling. Mm-hmm. And I was actually listening to a teaching a couple of days ago and it was talking about how um, like Paul knew his calling, you know, he knew exactly yeah. what the Lord called him to. He knew exactly, you know, where the Lord was leading. And it was like, Paul wasn't, being a Peter, you know, Paul wasn't Mm -hmm. being a Barnabas. Like they each had their own particular giftings. They were all in their own zones and they walked that out with the Lord. And so I think that's That's a big thing too, is to know your call and then also to know your call within that ministry. And, Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, I think it was pastor, it was pastor Chuck I was listening to. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was saying, you know, Paul, how he starts like the epistles and it's like, Paul, you know, servant or, you know, of Christ Jesus or apostle. And he said always by, um, by the will of God, it was never by will of man. Mm. And so that was something that the Lord really impressed on my heart too, was to know your call. And it's not a call that like man has given you, but it's a call that the Lord has given you. It's a call that the Lord has, um, revealed to you. And it's an anointing that the Lord has given you. And so, um, that's kind of what I wanted to go into as well of like, okay, now, you're a believer, you know, you've been walking with the Lord for, you know, maybe quite some time, you've been getting discipled. And that's a big thing too, what you yeah. said too, of just like when you are a new believer, you know, get discipled, seek that mentorship. Mm-hmm. I, I wish that I had that when I first came to the Lord, mm-hmm. but God uses all things. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I like, I'm, I have such a heart for that, but yeah. I feel like if I would have had someone walk me my first, uh, first year or two it would have been mm-hmm. a lot better, mm-hmm. but, um, Thank God for his grace and redemption. Yeah. Um, but that's really big is to to kind of find that. Um, and so once you've been walking with the Lord, you're getting mentored, you're getting discipled, then you're starting to, you know, be like, okay, well, like, what is my calling? Like, what has the Lord called me to do? And yeah. it's everybody out there, everyone who has received Christ as their Lord and Savior, everybody has a calling. Amen. Everyone is called into ministry and everyone is called um, to be a missionary wherever they're at. Amen. So. I just want everyone to know like those three things, Amen. but there are certain ways that the Lord uses you in each of those capacities and it looks different for everybody. Um, and so I would say practical things of like how to know that you're called. Um, obviously you need to, to seek the Lord, um, you know, as you're in scripture, as you're in the word, you know, ask the Lord to reveal to you like, Lord, you know, what is my calling? What have mm. you, what have you, you know, created me for, Amen. but also like, what do you want me to do? And mm. that's where, um, that could be a whole other segment, but like, yeah. that's where your spiritual gift starts to come in, you Amen. know, like has the Lord, you know, given you the gift of, you know, mercy, maybe yeah. in time, he's going to have you start up like the homeless ministry mm-hmm. or something, you know, guy like, man, has he given you the gift of teaching? You know, mm. maybe he's going to call you to pastoral ministry, you know, and, and the gift of, you know, music and worship and all those yeah. things. And so it's like, you know, knowing your gifting actually is very like it pairs with knowing your calling. Amen. Because once you know your calling, you're going to know how to serve the Lord in the way that he's called you to serve. Mm-hmm. And that was something that um, a pastor actually in Spain he um, encouraged me and when I was praying about going and what that looked like. And he was saying, you know, there's always going to be a need, especially in the church, especially, you Mm -hmm. know, in ministry. But he was like, you want to be call driven. You don't want to be need driven. Mm -hmm. And so he even told me, he was like, you can 
absolutely come out here. Like we need someone to do coffee bar, social media, do worship, like all the things where I was like, yes, okay. Why isn't God opening the door? And he was like, so there is a need, but are you being called mm-hmm. at this moment? Is God calling you? And I was like, mm, like kind of, but no. And like, I knew I was like, it's a no, it's not yeah. right now, you yeah. know, and the door isn't closed. But that really spoke to me because it was like, absolutely, I can go and and by God's grace, fulfill that need and serve. But am I called? Am I anointed for that task in that specific moment, in that specific yeah. season? Or am I stepping in because I'm like, oh, I can I can do this mm. and hindering maybe the Lord might wanting to raise somebody else someone or else, someone else yeah. to go up there. And so that's really important, too, is to to know, you know, your calling so that you know exactly what the Lord's called you to and that you, what we were talking about earlier, you kind of just like stay in your lane and not mm-hmm. in a selfish way, but just knowing like, this is what God has called me to. This is what he's anointed me for. And I want to be fully here. Yeah. Cause sometimes when we're everywhere, then our heart is just like in 20 different places, mm. you know, and you're not fully devoted, exactly. you know, to those, to those, um, things that he's called you to. So mm. that was, yeah really what I felt that that was our second tier of like what it means to know your calling and I like that you said that we all have that specific call to um go into the world preach the good news the gospel so that's Mm. Mark 16 15 um and then Matthew 28 19 through 20 which is for our church that's like our mission statement what we want to do is Matthew 20 19 which is therefore go Mm -hmm. and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. So in whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. So the point of all this that we're saying you're calling is to do that, is to go into the world, wherever that is, that might just be, I mean, you might be handicapped and be at home and you just pray for others. Mm -hmm. You might be working at Taco Bell and you clean the dishes. You might be uh, someone who's just a stay-at-home mom. You might be an accountant. You might be working at a homeless shelter. Anything that you're doing, you can use that for the glory of God. This guy named Brother Lawrence, he was a dishwasher. Like, he washed dishes, Mm. dishes, Mm -hmm. dishes, and he was able to still worship God, praise him, and people Mm -hmm. come from miles around, like, miles just to hear what he would— say like the wisdom he had because he just was intimate with the lord so ultimately um if you feel like there's something in your life that the lord has specifically been calling you to do like maybe he's been telling you hey i want you to stop doing what you're doing which is maybe you're working like as Uh, maybe you're a doctor and you're making good money and the lord's like i want you to be a medical missionary and to Mm -hmm drop everything which there's a story about that of this guy um in the experiencing god series that we did with henry blackaby and he realized oh my goodness the lord had called me to do that but i just did what my parents told me to do to go to mm-hmm. school so but romans eight twenty eight, god worked that mm-hmm. out because he was able to get his degree and everything but then he had to leave all the money everything to then just be in this humble position where he felt so much more fulfilled so much more satisfied even though he was always in danger probably cold hungry starving and same thing with like you see that with paul like he wasn't glorified he wasn't this influencer that we see nowadays on social media but he was fulfilled because he was doing what god he was staying in his lane what the lord was calling him to do and like krista said the only way you can know what god's calling you to do is to ask him and it says anyone who um, asks receives anyone who seeks finds and those who knock the door will be open so to be persistent like go into that quiet time that stillness with the lord and say lord speak to me reveal to me maybe use other people to give me confirmations i just want to know what you offer me and it might be something that even before christ that you are good at the lord's Mm -hmm. restoring that maybe it was something like you were in a rock band and you were but you're worshiping the devil and the lord needs to deliver you from those things but now he wants you to lead worship Mm -hmm. i mean maybe you were like Gordon Ramsay in Hell's Kitchen cussing away. Uh, but the Lord wants you to now use your cooking for the homeless or <laughs> to use your hospitality. But I don't know. The Lord, he's so faithful and he's so good. And mm. 
don't ever feel like your calling is lame or not as cool as other people who are pastors and on stage. If you're doing something that the Lord's called you to do, when you stand before him in heaven one day and he says, well done, Mm -hmm. my good and faithful servant, like you did everything that I told you to do. And yes, you got made fun of. Yes, your parents told you you're you are a loser and you should be doing this like your other siblings. You need to focus on what the Lord specifically has called you to do. So that was a lot, but you have the third tier or. Yeah. And then I just wanted to share, um, in Exodus three fourteen. So it's when I'm, you know, when Moses is like, uh, no, no, no. Like I'm not, mm, I'm not going to yeah. go or, you can't know, speak. I, I can't speak and all these things. And so, um, I, it's always just been such a powerful verse. And I think of that, especially when you, are asking the Lord or the Lord is now showing you things and is putting things on your heart and is asking you to walk in things. And now you're growing now in that other area of faith where you're now trusting the Lord of like, okay, now you're revealing my gifts, you're revealing my calling. And now like I'm being used, yeah. like now the Lord is using me. Now I'm, I'm this vessel and things are happening. Things are mm. going, things are moving. Like we've had that time, you know, of, of the discipleship of the mm-hmm. mentorship of like being trained up you know, being yeah. trained up, being ready. And now the Lord's like, all right, now, now we're, we work some things out. We've done some things and now I'm going to start revealing things to you. Now exactly. you're going to start walking in that. And so, but I always um, go back to this, but it's um, Exodus three fourteen, and it, and he says, um, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Mm. And I, I love that because it's, you know, no man is sending you and no person, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's the anointing of the Lord and it's the Lord, you know, and even when you are, um, like I think about, um, you know, like serving at the church or people are like, Hey, like, have you, have you prayed about this spiritual gift? Like maybe you should pray about this or, you know, pray about serving here. I always encourage others of like, okay, well, did the Lord show you that? Mm-hmm. Like, has the Lord revealed this to you, you know? And because, we mean well, mm-hmm. but we're man. Like mm-hmm. we're, we fail, we're fallen. <laughs> like mm-hmm. we don't always have the the greatest ideas We're you know, but, um, I think that's just always very crucial is like to seek the Lord. Yeah. And then once you have that, okay, I, I sense the, the spirit is leading me here. I, I believe the Lord's revealed this to me in his word. Then you bring it before others. And you're like, I really, you know, sense that the Lord's leading me into this ministry, or I really would like to serve in this capacity, or he's given me, you know, a burden for, for this. Um, can you partner with me? Can you pray? You know, and it's beautiful how you do that. And then, you know, a couple days later or a text or whatever, and it'll be like, Hey, I was praying and the Lord gave me this verse, or I really feel that the Lord wants you to serve in this way. And then you're Mm -hmm. like, well, there's my confirmation. There's, you know, the Holy spirit that resides in me is residing in this person and they're confirming like, Hey, I, I think this is what the Lord is doing. I believe the Lord is leading in this way. I think this is a a good fit, you know? Mm. And so, but it always goes back to seeking the Lord, you know, and asking the Lord. And I've for, I think it's like almost like 10 years now of serving in ministry. Um, that was probably one of the best things that anyone has ever given me and counseled me in. Um, because I have that personality where I'm like, I want to do everything. <laughs> like I like, you know, and, and God is so good. And there's been seasons of my life where I've operated in one gift more than the other, or I've served in, in, in this ministry rather than the ministry I was in two years mm-hmm. ago. You know, like, I feel like he's always, for some, there's always where you're this, there's, um, the differing gifts and the Lord will exercise them at different mm-hmm. moments and different times. And so I'm like, I want to do this. I want to do this. Like, ah, I just like want to do it all. Yeah. And there were times where I was like, no, like, I don't want to be me driven. I need to be, I need to be call driven. Mm -hmm. And so even when, you know, the, you see the need or the opportunity might present itself, that is my biggest encouragement and advice to, you know, anyone listening is bring it before the Lord and ask the Lord, you know, to confirm it. And I remember talking with you about it when we talked about, um, just youth ministry and worship and the podcast. And it was so cool how it was like, how the Lord brought them at different moments, but it was after I p- was praying, praying but I really didn't say anything until you mm. or someone else approached me. And I was like, wow, like I actually was praying about this. And mm. like, I believe that 
this is confirmation from the Lord, you know? And so Mm -hmm. even like that, it's just, the Lord is always working on, on the other side too. So Mm -hmm. that's my biggest thing is before stepping in, you know, um, anywhere, you know, seek the Lord because Mm -hmm. even as a a new believer, yes, get plugged in, but it might be a time where God wants you to just study, you know, you think of Paul, when Paul was saying, like, he didn't just go automatically to the other disciples. Mm -hmm. It was like, he had that time in Arabia because he had to, um, he had, he needed that time with the Lord. The Lord needed to do a a work or a finding work, a sanctifying work. There's, you know, revelation, he didn't know the scripture. And then after he was trained up and ready, then he, it was time for him to, mm. to join the others. And so I always think about that too. Like, don't despise that time, that like Arabia yeah. time, or you might want to be like, I want to serve now, or I'm, I'm zealous for like, let's go. But it's just ask the Lord, seek the Lord, and then bring that before others. And, you know, it says, um, I don't even know where it's at and I can't find it, but you know, there's wisdom and multitude of counselors, mm, you know? Okay. So if like, yeah. you're getting this, this person's getting this, this other person that you trust is getting that it's like well, what's God saying you yeah. know what is the Holy Spirit you know telling everyone so that would be I'd say the biggest thing is just always bring it back to you you know where's the Lord leading what doors is he opening mm. and is it his timing yeah and I really like that you did that with youth group I remember it really stood out to me because usually when we ask people something like that where they do a position of kind of being a leader or something they'd be like yes I'll do it but I love, I think it was Morgan and Valley who were even talking about, like Carissa was like, when we asked her, she was like, let me pray about it. Where it's like, even though you had felt from God still and God was doing it, you're like, let me just ask mm-hmm. again, just to be sure. Because I think it's Matthew seven twenty three where it says like, but didn't we do this in your name, God? Mm-hmm. Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we heal? Right. Didn't I do yeah. all these good things? And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Mm-hmm. The, uh, like the works you have done are unauthorized or mm-hmm. you who practice lawlessness. But also, I think it's the same verse where it's like, in other translations, like the things you've done are unauthorized. I did mm-hmm. not tell you to do mm-hmm. that. Like maybe Morgan was supposed to do that, but not you, Carissa. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or anything that we feel in our flesh, like, but I really want to do that. Right. Maybe you should be careful that it's something you want to do and mm-hmm. it's not what the Lord has you to do. And just take like a day or however long to maybe pray and fast mm-hmm. about it. And it might not be really long. You might get an answer really quick, right. but like Chris was saying, even just for practical reasons of you just don't want to get burnt out. You don't right. want you to be stretched thin. Um, we, we've had that here. We've had, because we are a small church and we do need a lot of help. So people are willing, but then mm-hmm. it doesn't help us when we've trained them. And then they're like, Oh, I can't do this anymore. Right. We'd rather someone who is like, really feels from the Lord and can give it with passion and excitement because they're like, Hey, I asked the Lord and he, it doesn't have to be also this like big revelation from God, like Carissa, I'm speaking to you in this bright light. And you have like 20 confirmations. Yeah. worship. (laughs) Yeah. That's not going to happen like that. It might just be, you pray about it Mm -hmm. and you just feel peace. Like you're just like, yeah, it's, it's going to be okay or whatever. And so don't think it has to be this big revelation. It can just be this peace you have, or maybe just like Chris was saying, just ask other people that you trust in your life, someone who maybe is discipling you and say, can you also pray about this? And what do you Mm think? Um, But anyway, all that to say, we all have different callings. You all have different spiritual gifts. I think I want to do a podcast on on that at a different time. And where in the Bible does it talk about spiritual gifts? Like some people have the gift of mercy or hospitality or teaching or prophecy, um, giving, exhortation. Like there's so many. And I mean, this sounds like kind of like a weird Christian version of the Enneagram. We don't, I don't really... The inner game is not good and I don't encourage anyone to do that. But I remember taking this one like almost like test on like what my spiritual gift is. But it was so fun. Like it was so cool because it was also like a confirmation. That's the only thing I looked at it because I've already had people tell me like, hey, I think you really move more in the prophetic or exhortation or like, I don't know, things like that. Whereas my fiance, Ryan, like he obviously has like the gift of giving and hospitality Mm. and mercy and all these things that I do not have. So I just think it's really cool how we shouldn't just be like, Oh, I have my one gift and that's all I want. Mm. Like we should also ask the Lord, like, God, I also want to be able to be more hospitable. So help me with that gift. And the Lord might say, Hey, that's 
not for you. Like you can be hospitable in other ways. Like you don't even have a house. So stop trying to like, or like, I don't know, but maybe just serve at the house of God. But Mm -hmm. there's so many things where it's like, giving all of us can give we don't have to be like these wealthy people who are giving all this money but like the Um, little widow with little what with what she had giving it unto the lord or if the lord has you like give a word to someone and you feel like the lord's saying hey i just feel like the lord's telling me to tell you that jesus loves you i mean that can be in exhortation or encouragement edifying a word of knowledge like and these things that we put these big titles on that make it sound so fancy and you're so professional like when we put this on my christian resume it's like Mm. who cares just step out in any gift that the lord is prompting to you and just be willing to be spirit-led and that's what i'm just really encouraged i'll ask you uh, to end it with closing thoughts but for me i just want to say i'm really encouraged what the lord's doing here at calvary and just across the country and in the Mm -hmm. world with just an awakening and outpouring of his spirit because i think what's happening is that people are realizing their need to just get right with the lord and then once you're right with the lord like we were saying with getting discipleship mentorship confessing your sins to one another so you can be healed you can then be used like mm-hmm. you don't have to walk with that guilt and shame because mm-hmm. i feel like maybe you're out there and you feel like you can't walk in your calling because you're just overwhelmed with this oh mm-hmm. my goodness the night before i did this like i can't be used by god whereas his mercies Been are there. new every day mm-hmm. so he can forgive you right now if you did the worst sin out there the lord can forgive you and he wants to use you and yes be careful because you don't want to be prideful and like thinking like, oh, I'm going to tell this person not to do this when you had just done that. But also what makes me really sad is some people feel like, oh yeah, well, I'm not good in this area. So who am I to do this? Cause I don't, I have a log in my eye. And so I'm not going to take out the speck or whatever. And you can like twist scripture where Mm -hmm. all it is, is you see another brother and sister who's maybe struggling with like, let's just say fornication, but you too are struggling with it. And you're like, Hey, I don't want to do this anymore. Or maybe you did in the past and Lord had forgiven you. But if anything, you should want better for them. You shouldn't want to see your brother or sister falling. And I see that with parents too. I see parents say, well, I wasn't the best kid. You know, like I looked at pornography and I had this. So who am I to expect that on my kids? That is not the way to go about it. We should want better. We should care about others. We should want to see people walking in their calling and the freedom that Christ gives when you confess and get right with him and truly repent. So not that you're perfect, but God can use imperfect people. I mean, Mm -hmm. look at the disciples. Look Mm -hmm. at me. I am imperfect. And the fact that God can use me, I'm just thankful that the Lord uses broken, sick people. So Mm. anyway, that was my 50 million cents. Gave a little (laughs) too many cents. Not that it made sense, but okay, hopefully it did. But what are your closing thoughts, Carissa? Um, yeah, I would say the last little tier, um, would be, I think to, I don't know. Cause I was even praying. I was like, okay, Lord, like, what do you want me to like share on? You know? And I was like, there's other people that have like served in ministry that are serving now. And I was like, I don't, I almost like that. Like, I don't feel worthy to like speak on this topic. Like I, I've just served the Lord and okay, cool. But so I like asked the Lord of like, okay, what do you, what is the exhortation? What is the encouragement for people listening or even yeah. those that are a little seasoned and maybe just like, you know, don't know. And one of the things I felt that he pressed on my heart was, um, I think what it means to be called into, um, into ministry, you know, whether that's in your school or your job or actually within the four walls of a church or Mm -hmm. um even like looking at the testimony of my life of what the lord's done just like what missions might look like what yeah yeah, like the the ministry of family you know Mm -hmm. all these things that um that are your ministry and i think that comes down to okay again like getting ready to serve what it means to to serve and then like what is god calling you to and then lord in that calling, what is my ministry? Who are you calling me to yeah, serve? Who are you calling me to love on? You know, and I think over the um, over time, the Lord really gave me, you know, a burden for my family. Mm-hmm. And that was after 
after my Arabia time where the Lord had to go take me away, do a little heart things and train me up. And yeah. I was in ministry and all these things. And then there was a point where the Lord's like, all right, you're almost like you're beefed up. You're ready. Now I'm sending you, you know, back home. And I'm reminded of like Nehemiah, you know, how he went and was like, okay, like I, I see these, these, this land that's desolate and these people. And like, I, I want to go back there and rebuild, you know? And I love that because Nehemiah was willing to go back, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, where can, where can the king send me next? Or like, okay, it was like, yeah. I want to go back and rebuild, you know? Humbled, and so I think, yeah. yeah. So it's part true. of that is just a willingness to go wherever the Lord wants you to go. Mm, and, you know, good. for a brief time, the Lord, you know, it was like, okay, go here, go here, go here, go here, you know? And I believe that's because the Lord has given me that call to, to missions and a missionary, but what it looked like was a burden for yeah. for people. It was a burden for um, the Lord's people and to serve. And then the Lord just started to to shape that and cultivate that. And then it was, okay, a burden to serve. And then it was the call to serve. And then it was different regions yeah, or different people, serve. you know. And so in that, it was the Lord, you know, that revealed that and then confirmed it by placing me and opening, you know, doors. And so mm. for some, it might mean to go, you know, and that's what my life has been like for the past couple of years of just constant going. But I know people where the Lord, and it's so beautiful because the Lord's called them to stay and they absolutely know in their heart of hearts and what the Lord has given them that they are called to stay. Yeah. And they, they are there, they're in their community, they're in their neighborhood, they're at their local church, and they are just, this This is where God has called me, and so, like, this is where I'm mm. at. And so I think that's um, another important thing of just knowing your call into ministry yeah. and what that looks like of, is the Lord sending you out? Has he given you, you know, a burden for, for missions, you know, mm -hmm. and what does that look like? You know, pray about it. Yeah. Once again, go ask uh, counsel, invite people to pray with you. Start praying specific. See if God opens the door. And, you know, how does the Lord confirm, you know, when we're um, uh, walking in things and, and confirming is through his word, through through people, through um, through prayer, through circumstances, you know. And it's like if you have a call to mission, like start praying and see see what the Lord does, you know. And I think when it's a true burden from the Lord, it's not a burden in the negative sense of like, oh, goodness. Mm. But it's like I can't get this out of my heart and I, I need to, I need to see what this is about, you know? And that's when you pray and like all of a sudden, boom, 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 maybe all the doors mm -hmm. might open and all of a sudden there you go, you know, yeah. or you might, the Lord might be like, I want you to stay and I want you to do this and I want you to pour in here. And so you stay, you know, but I think yeah. there's that heart, that willingness to either go where the Lord is calling you to go or to stay Amen. if he's called you to stay. But even the go might mean what we talked about a while ago of just Calling your family member that doesn't know the Lord, yeah. going to your grocery store, knocking on your neighbor's door, mm. you know, and just being, I think that's where it comes down to of just like, you know, walking in the spirit so that you don't, you know, gratify the things of the flesh of like, well, this Amen. is my agenda. This is my plan. This is, yeah. it's like walking by the spirit, going where the spirit's leading. This is who I want you to talk to. This is, I don't want you to go over here. Like I, mm. you know, like the Lord the, the Lord knows, you know, and it's like when we're being spirit led, like he, he will lead us. And so yeah. I just want to encourage those that maybe have that burden or are praying about that, or just are like, I don't even know how to pray or like how to go about it. But I also want to encourage and exhort those that are like, I just feel called to work, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel that the Thank Lord you. has called me to be a light in my workplace. And absolutely, you know, we need people in the workplace. We yeah. need people out to be lights in the world. You know, I always think about too, and we're always just constantly like around Christians and, <laughs> and the church is like, how can I be a light among lights? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to outshine anyone because that's prideful and, and vanity, but like, what is, how, how can I illuminate the love of Christ? And it's like, when you are sent out, you know, mm. into the dark and when you are sent out to go and preach to the masses, you know? And so for those that are like, I feel called to be in my job. And I believe this is my mission field, you know, then yeah. that is your calling. Amen. The Lord has gifted you. The Lord has anointed you. The Lord has equipped you for that task. That mm. is your calling. So if you're called to go back to work, to go be at the university and all the, like, then walk in that like a hundred and 10%, you know? And, um, and like for me, like 
the call to, to ministry has been through, um, doors that the Lord has opened through, um, uh, exhortation from others, confirmation from others, um, the Lord opening these doors, but I've never had the position where I'm like working at a church or I'm like full time all the time, 24 mm-hmm. seven in the four walls of a church. And it's, and the missions life has looked different, but my mission field everywhere I've gone has looked different. You know, now it's at the high school before it was at an elementary last time it was at a liberal company, like all mm. these things, but my mission field was wherever I went and ministry is wherever you go, Amen. you know, because wherever you go, you're taking the, you're taking Christ with you. You're taking the love of Christ. You're, you have the good news, you know, we're preaching the gospel. And so mm. the Lord will open those doors, but yes. it comes down to, do you have the willing heart? Yeah. Are you hearing from the Lord? You know, his word says my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow. Um, and so it's like, do you know the Lord's voice? Do you hear the Lord's voice? And the only way you'll know the Lord's voice and you'll Mm. hear these things is if you spend time in his word, Mm. you know, and if you are in communion with the Lord and you're seeking the Lord and you, you know, like, this is what God's called me to. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing too. When you know that you're walking in your calling and you know what the, the, the things that the Lord's called you to, and you're in them, you're not burnt out. You're not striving, you know? And that's what I was sharing with a friend um, who's a missionary, um, overseas. And we were talking about, and I was like, I don't, yeah, there are times where I'm like, I don't know how my schedule is like this. And, and we do these, these things. And we were talking about how, but when you do the work of the Lord and you're going where the Lord leads, it's not a work of the flesh. It's not mm-hmm. a work of Carissa. It's the Holy spirit, you know, not by mind or by power, by the spirit of the Lord. So all these things I'm able to do because the spirit is empowering me and is equipping me to do it. Therefore it's not on my own strength. It's not in my own like energy. That is why I'm not burnt out. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm not like, Oh my gosh, another thing, another thing. It's like, no, because you're walking in what the Lord has asked you to do because he's anointed you and he's Mm -hmm. equipped you for that task. Therefore you're like, I trust the Lord. These are the things he's called me to. He's going to equip me. He's going to empower me. And so that is, I think, key in all of this is walking in the spirit Mm. and using your gifts to glorify the Lord, but also knowing like, this is what God's called me to. And I'm, I'm going to walk in it and, Mm. and I'm going to trust him to open these doors because I think there's a lot of Christians out there that sometimes don't walk in their calling Yeah. or like I was sharing with you, like we'll walk in like, um, what they think is their calling, but the whole time they're striving and there's Mm, no peace and they're like miserable. Yeah. And it's like, well, did the Lord call you to that? Did the Lord, you know, anoint you for that? And so, um, think about, you know, David too, like David was, uh, anointed King. And then for a time was sent to go back and shepherd and Mm -hmm. like be, be out in the field. And then through all these other series of things, then the time came, but he was faithful. He was faithful mm. to be the the shepherd. He was faithful to mm. tend the sheep. And so I think that too, like the call might come. The Lord might have given you a vision, might have yeah. given you something. And there's that that waiting. ruminating time. There's that waiting time. But but his word is is true. Mm. Never returns void. And and you know, if it comes to pass, it comes to pass. And that that was the Lord. But I always think of that with David too. Like he got the call. Yeah. And then was like pfft. All right, now we're going to go do this. I would have been like, I'm sorry, what? Are you yeah. sure you called me to this? Are you, what's going on? But it is, it's the trusting the Lord and just like knowing the voice of the Lord and what he's called you to and to walk in that mm, by faith yeah. and in the confidence of the Lord. Yeah. I mean, talk about David being a shepherd. It's like my sheep hear my voice and they will not listen to the voice of another. Mm. They will not listen to the, hey, this place is hiring or this is offering. Like this is right. here. They'll be like, is this you, God? Right. Like, not my will, not someone else's will for my life, but your will be done. Yeah. Like, my meat is to do your will, so mm. you direct me. And that's a daily thing of, like, God, what do you want me to wear today? Like, start simple. Start small. Like, God, where, where do you want me to go eat? Should I go out to eat with these people? Like, just start small and ask the Lord to speak to you because he will. Mm-hmm. And like we said in the beginning, Krista said, get involved in a church. That's the best place to be because the point of the church is what my dad does is he equips us for the work of the ministry. He trains us up in the church so that we can go out, like Chris was saying, and be a light in the dark 
in this dark world. So I'm going to read this verse and then we can close it up. But um, it says Ephesians 4, starting 11, it says he and he, God himself, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That's what I was talking about. That's my dad's job to equip the saints for the work of the ministry wherever you are. Uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may we grow up in all things to him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share Mm. causes growth for the body and the edifying of itself in love. So we need every part. You're going Mm. to be different. You might have one talent. Someone else might have 10 talents, but if they're still stuck at 10 talents and not doubling that, the Lord will say, you wicked, mm-hmm. lazy servant. And so if you have one talent and you double that with two, the Lord is, is going to be pleased. Mm-hmm. He And other people might think, oh, you're so lame or you're not doing a lot with your life. Don't listen to what everyone else is saying. Stay in the lane of the Holy Spirit. Block off all, like the world says, all the haters, <laughs> but block off all the haters other voices and just listen to the voice of Jesus. But anyway, mm-hmm. sorry. That was long, but thank you, Carissa, for just speaking the truth and was in the Lord spoken through you. But if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also follow us on Instagram. Carissa is over our Instagram and you can check out behind the scenes. We want to do more Q and A's and things like that. So make sure when she does a story with the Q and A that you let us know what guests you want to have or let us know um, what topics you want us to talk about. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is listener supported. So if you like to donate, uh, you can do that in the description below. That will help us get guests. Like we just had David Guzik. We're going to have Dr. Sam Storms here at Cadbury Valley on May 7th at our 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and a special 6 p.m. service. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And we love you guys and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much and God bless.